Yo, what's up dudes? I'm back with another video about your preferred peripheral Final Fantasy XIV. We started off with keyboard and mouse and talked a little bit about that last time and what that looks like starting from the vanilla HUD. And if you guys remember, there's sort of three types of inputs that you'll see most often in Final Fantasy XIV. You can play with a keypad, you can play with a controller, or you can play with a keyboard and mouse. And we're just sort of making our way through them. And then we're going to talk about HUD. And then we're going to talk about any other extra peripherals, such as an MMORPG mouse. So we're getting there slowly. So today we're focusing in on the keypad. This could be the Razer Tartarus or something like the Logitech G13. I personally own the Final Fantasy XIV Fighter. I bought it when it first went up for pre-order. As soon as I saw it in the live letter and I saw Yoshi P have his hand on like the weird funky prototype or whatever, I was like, yeah. I need that. That design is by design from Yoshi P himself. I was like, I can't not own this beautiful piece of tech. And then you see him in live letters and he's still using the G13. <laughs> so it's like, I wonder if he doesn't find it very comfortable or maybe he hasn't transitioned. I don't really know, but either way. But for anyone that visited my stream, you guys still see on my hand cam that I actively use this all the time. This is my primary input with an MMORPG mouse. I would recommend it with an MMORPG mouse for the fuller experience. But this by itself with the regular mouse is what we're going to talk about today again if you're new here quick disclaimer i have tattoos on my hands please do not be weirded out by it it's just an aesthetic choice that i made once upon a time in my life because you're going to see my hands quite a bit in this video so let me show you the final fantasy 14 keypad but first we're going to log in in case you guys missed it from last video as well if you need to back up your data before you start fiddling with your hud i highly recommend it the way that you can do that is right from this little sort of character cogwheel type icon that you see in the top right here next to your character name you just click that hit I understand and proceed and you can upload your current UI or keybinds and then download them later on if you need to on PS4 or Windows or whatever else. You can do them alternating as well, which is really cool. So anything you absolutely need or are worried about breaking, just do a quick upload and then you can download it later so you don't break anything. This right here is actually super helpful too if you do play on PS4 and on PC because you can build your entire UI on PC first and then export it over to PS4 via the character settings backup tool. But because I already did that before we got into the video today, I'm good to go. So this here is the FF14 Hori keypad, otherwise known as the Hori FF14. Oh god, what is it called again? Tactical Assault Commander F14 Final Fantasy 14 Edition. It's real, uh, it's real intense. Okay, it's a, this is not to be messed with. This is not just some toy. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be careful with this, this uh, Tactical Assault Commander. It's, it's nuts. And it is my preferred input. Again, this product was developed alongside Yoshi P, which provides a lot of insight because he plays with the Logitech G13. And what I like about keypads is the amount of access you have on the keypad itself. You don't even have to worry about WSD on this particular one. There are some keypads that you'll find that actually need to have WSD bound for movement and everything. This one, you just have a joystick, which is really convenient. This one also by itself extends, so if you have have a longer thumb. You got this little thing that makes it so you can extend it all the way if you need to. I keep mine right about there, I believe. So yeah, it's not too bad. I really enjoy it. And the amount of range you have on this thing is outstanding. I mean, full 21 keys, you can assign anything to them. This is great for also pushing modifiers and everything because you can just assign whatever modifiers are comfortable for you. You'll also find that I do a lot of like sort of cross abilities between like this and keyboard and mouse, such as for example, pressing tab to tap target things, which is not unforeign to a lot of keyboard users as it is. But this will be helpful, for example, for like people that are transitioning from controller to uh, keypad and mouse, so, for example. And something to keep in mind before I get started is that if you have, say, the or Tartarus or the Logitech G13 or any other branded keypad, it's going to look a little bit different depending on what your keypad has on it and how many buttons are available to you. So I hope this helps in some regards sort of guide you in understanding where you want to put your modifiers, where you want to put certain keys to help you out in Final Fantasy 14. So like I said in the last video, you're going to want to find like a place that has some nice background music or like somewhere that looks really pretty or something like that because you're going to be here for about an hour or two while you set up your HUD and keybinds and everything. And just like I said in the last video, you're going to want to spend some time on this stuff. So be sure to set aside the time, like the one to three hours, depending on how deep you're going to go with your UI and your HUD layout to make sure that you only really do it once and then modify it from there. Basically, it's like anything else. The more time you spend setting it up, the more likely it is for you not to have to do it all over again or change things and move stuff around. So it's like one good solid sit down is all you really need for this kind of stuff. I have an unannounced visitor. Give me one second. Is that the small cat I see? So just like last video, I made everything as default as default could be for uh, everything that I have had set up before. The only difference is that your actual UI size might be a little bit different from what I have it as. Like, for example, I know that if you're on PS4, your HUD might be like all the way zoomed in like this, for example. And the way that we fix that is we just open up our system configuration menu. We change our default size 
size to 100%, click apply all or whatever other percent you need. You might actually have to also change uh, this from like 150% to like 100% or 2% or whatever else you need and then hit apply all and then you're good. So if anything looks a little too crazy, you can adjust it from that menu to start you off. So I have a default HUD and I have this keypad that looks nothing like what my HUD looks like and I'm panicking just a little bit because I'm like, oh God, I got to sign all these buttons to this keypad and figure it out in such a way that it's relatively efficient for me. How do I do that? Well, guess what? You're in luck. I'm here to help. So the first thing we're actually going to get started with is changing the way that your character moves. So the game by default uses WASD to move around your character. Depending on what kind of keypad you have, if it has a joystick or if it uses WASD, you're gonna wanna reassign your strafe keys to A and D on your keyboard. Because if you don't do that, I'm gonna pull out my keyboard very briefly for this one, is when I use S, I obviously walk backwards very slow. And then when I mix in D and A, I do this sort of like weird back pedal type thing as I mentioned in my last video. And it's super inefficient if I actually wanna like move left or right. So that's why we reassign our A and D keys. So it actually makes sense when we we hit left or right and we do that by opening up our key bind and then reassigning strafe left to a and strafe right to d so if you're on a keypad that still uses wasd you go left and you can go right and it moves a lot smoother and it feels a lot better there than just like sort of this weird tanky back pedal, right? And if you have a keypad that assigns WASD to the joystick, it's the same sort of idea. As you can see, I'm now stretching left and right instead of sort of doing the weird tanky back pedal. Now the way that you do want to move in Final Fantasy XIV, or the way that I prefer moving, is holding right click on my mouse and holding forward. If you're holding forward, you can steer holding right click and it makes things quite comfortable. Rather than say moving with your character and then going left and right and whatnot, it just feels better. And also you can mix in a strafe and whatnot with that as well if you wanted to go like in certain directions. So it's like steering the camera while moving your character, sort of similar idea in like a third person shooter or something. So now that we have moving in the way, we can actually start adjusting things comfortably. One less thing to worry about. So I'm gonna hit escape and I'm gonna go into my HUD layout and we're gonna start adjusting things. So you guys remember from my last video, we had set up our key binds and our hotbar to align with exactly what we see on our keyboard here. One, two, three, four, five, Q, R, T, Y. It's quite comfortable to move our fingers around those buttons, and then all the other hotbars preceding that are alt modifiers or shift modifiers. So we're gonna do the same thing with the keypad. I want the exact representation of what's in front of me physically to reflect on the screen because it'll better translate for me as a player when I'm trying to learn a new controller peripheral and overall a new way of playing the game in general if I was a new player. It just having the physical translation in front of me reflect on the screen works a lot better for me as a player. And it might work better for you having that direct translation rather than having one through equals on your hotbars here and then making an attempt to assign it to this guy here. It just seems a little cumbersome, right? To try and translate what we have on screen right now to something like this. So I'm gonna make what's there on screen look like this guy here. And you're gonna do the same depending on what keypad you have as well. So we're gonna get started and go into our HUD layout here. And this is what it looks like by default. It's a little daunting, a little strange at first. We're gonna do similar to what we did last time. So we're gonna go into our HUD layout. And as you can see, this is our current HUD setup as it is by default. It's a little bit daunting, it's a little scary at first, but it's not too bad once we get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just sort of clean up the space a bit and move these longer hot bars over here until I decide what I'd like to do with them. I don't really need those hot bars seven through nine quite yet for right now. So I'm just gonna put them over there. And then same with the cross hot bar because I'm not using a controller input right now. I'm gonna move it to the side just because it's sort of just there right now as is. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up keep clicking it if I don't put it somewhere for now. So we've got hot bar one and two active. The way we can tell they're active is we see that they don't have the blue font on here. Any UI element that has blue type rather than the white type that you see here means that it's currently deactivated. And that's okay for right now. We're probably going to need a hop bar three again later on. But for right now, our big concern is just hop bar one and two. So we can get a direct reflection of what we have on our keypad here. So I'm going to start by changing the way that hop bar one is laid out. So I'm going to start by changing around the hop bar layout itself. The way I do this is I click the little cog wheel that says UI element settings, rate next to hotbar one there and it's going to give me a few options for hotbars now as you guys can see there's a bit of a problem here i don't have 
anything that looks similar to what I have on the Hori pad here. So what I'm gonna do is manipulate a couple hot bars to make it look exactly like this. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna make two six by two hot bars for right now, and that should be sufficient enough. So hot bar one is a six by two, and then I'm gonna click hot bar two and change hot bar two to a six by two as well. Already by itself, it's starting to look more like a keypad. But I wanna rearrange these so that hot bar one is on top and hot bar two is on the bottom. So I'm gonna move hot bar one on top, move hot bar two in the bottom. And as you can see, it might not be too straight. So what I'm gonna do to fix that is I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard and I can snap this to grid. So as you can see, if I'm ever moving anything around on my HUD and I can't get it to the exact pixel that I'd like it to be, I can hold shift and I can manipulate it from there and it snaps to grid rather than letting go of shift and it's entirely free room. There's been many frustrating moments where I've tried to get it like pixel perfect and I can't quite get it. And then I realize I can just hold shift and get it as close as I possibly can to the perfect result on my hot bar. So I'm gonna hold shift down on this hot bar. I'm gonna put it like maybe right about there. So I'm gonna put hot bar one here. I'm actually gonna to move this random box of hot bar three out of the way for now and i'm gonna put hot bar one snap to grid hold shift put it about right there i'd say and then while holding shift still i'm gonna line up hot bar two and as you can see there's a little bit of overlap there so i'm just gonna let go of shift and move it down just a bit perfect so as you can see it lines up that same line lines up in my hot bar it's gonna look real nice and lined up and real coherent there and already we have something that starts to look like our keypad here as you can see. But as you guys can see, there's already an extra button or two. We got six and equals, then control six and control equals also there. We don't need these extra buttons. So now we can actually start molding a little bit better in our actual key binds. Now what's convenient is, unlike our first video, I don't really have to worry about hand movement and modifier placement because we have so many buttons on a keypad as is. And because we have this whole line here, I can assign a modifier to one of these buttons as well. My emphasis for my current action Actions are just gonna be on what I'm highlighting with my fingers here just around here just this like square box these buttons here I'm gonna use for other actions these ones are the buttons I'm gonna want to press when I'm actually hitting things healing things tanking things and so on and so forth so let's make that make sense we can go into our key binds here and then I'm gonna go over to hot bar and as you can see we already have assigned one two three four five six seven eight nine three equals for hot bar one right here which line up exactly with what we have in our keybind menu but because I only have one two three four five in this box here five buttons across and four buttons down I'm gonna entirely remove six off the hot bar just right click it and it gets rid of it and then I'm gonna reassign six to where seven is right now so that would be six seven eight nine zero and then again with the equals because we don't have that extra button there I'm gonna completely get rid of it so right click it and it's gone and then with our second hotbar we're gonna do the exact same thing just with control this time on hotbar two so control one two three four five is all good delete control six and I'm gonna put control six where control seven is right now so it lines up with what I'm doing. So control six, control seven, control eight, nine, zero. And then the equals again, we're gonna get rid of that entirely. So that's starting to look more like my keypad. Now this is where it's gonna look a little different comparatively, depending on what kind of equipment you're using. If it's a Tartarus, if it's one without a joystick, if it's a keypad with a joystick, but it's not the one I'm using, it's gonna look a little different and that's okay. Just try and keep this side of buttons for specific actions, because we want those to align with how it would be on PC for ease of use. It's very convenient to keep your left side of buttons clear for right now. So these ones exclude those. Everything here in this box that I'm highlighting with my hands here, those are the ones we're gonna use for actions, as I mentioned. So there's already a bit of a weird problem for me. As you guys can see, I have three buttons down here. When I go over to the Hori pad itself, if I look at it, I only have the three buttons down here. So what I'm gonna do is unassign the two actions that I have on this bar as well. So control nine, delete that. Control zero, delete that for now. So now it lines up. I got one, two, three, four, five for three rows and then three buttons on the bottom here. Now it's looking mostly good on my HUD here. It looks like it lines up relatively well. I have all my buttons and everything. And now I want those exact actions that I have laid out in my HUD to match what I have on the pad itself. Each keypad will likely have hardware to set all your binds to, which is where we go next. This is what it looks like currently for the F14 Hori pad. So we've got Hori pad one, two, three, four, five. And for whatever reason, they put C on five. We're gonna move that as well. So one, two, three, four, obviously line up with the actions that we have. And then five here, 
I'm going to change to, well, five because it's default C for whatever reason. And then seven, I'm going to set to six, just like I have in my keybinds. This six to a seven and then an eight, nine and a zero. And then this next row, which if you guys remember is hot bar two, will be control one, control two, control three, control four, control five and control six, control seven and control eight. So now our buttons sort of in this block here, line up with our HUD here and it actually makes sense. But then I realized, how am I going to jump? <laughs> I was like, I have all my buttons assigned to the keypad, but there's a few essential items that I kind of want on here, and I don't really know how to program them on there. That's when I said, well, okay, well, I could assign jump to this little button here, which is right here, if you guys can see. But I was like, oh, or maybe I could assign jump to the click in stick on my pad here. And I didn't really like that because I was like, these might wear out more than the actual buttons themselves. So then I thought, what if I assign one of the main buttons to jump? Something that's comfortable, something that feels good, and I still have full control while I'm hitting jump as well. Just like I would with WASD, but a little backwards if I'm moving, right? So I actually decided to change jump to this key right here, which is listed as 17. This was my jump. So that I can move around and still hit this and jump right? And I still have full access to all my skills here with that same finger. It's just that now I can just tap this to jump. So I'm going to reflect that on our keypad here. So left control, which I just assigned is actually going to be space. And then on our HUD, we have control five set to that little location there. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that key bind, which is control five, because I know I'll never get to it back to hotbar, unclick control five and apply. Now that key is my jump button and I still have full control. If you have a keypad that have, might have extra buttons like right here, or like if your keypad doesn't have a joystick of any sort and you have to set WASD somewhere on the keypad itself, I'd recommend you make it reflect in your UI as well. So for example, if I was changing this on a WASD keypad with no joystick, I would probably make 2678 WASD and just not put any skills there. In fact, a good way of doing this, if you want a direct visual representation, you could go into user macros and just make a macro with an arrow key that's blank. So for example, just click a random macro that's in the shared location. You want to make sure it's shared for all character classes. Change the icon to an arrow key, just like I did right here. And then you can put like, you know, up, down, left, right. And because these are blank macros, they don't actually do anything. You could just have that as a visual representation to be there if that is more your style. I know that's what would work best for me. Therefore, I would do that. That just means they're entirely blank. Like if I click two, it's not going to actually do anything. And obviously I would just make it so that these these buttons right here was just WASD rather than, you know, two, six, seven, eight. You would just unassign these key binds to achieve that because assumedly in your program, it's already assigned to WASD. You wouldn't have to have anything outside of a visual representation of what that actually looks like. But if you have the joystick, you don't need those because you already have the joystick to move your thumb around with. I just want to cover my bases to make sure that if you guys are using any type of keypad, you're good to go. So now I have a HUD and a sign keybinds that look exactly the F14 Hori pad, except for my jump button, which is just 17 rather than an actual action itself. It's just jump. So now I can like run around, jump, and then I can hit other buttons here. But because I know Final Fantasy 14, I know I have more actions than just what I have on those face buttons. So I'm going to make a duplicate of hotbar one and two on hotbar three and four, and it's gonna have all my modifier keys on it, which is gonna be great. And we do that by going HUD layout, and now we have to activate hotbar three and four. As you guys remember, I put hotbar three here. I'm gonna go into my UI element settings, turn it on, change it to six by two, save, and then I'm gonna activate hotbar four, UI elements, six by two again, activate it by clicking the checkbox and save. Hold shift to snap to grid. I like that spacing on them. They line up as well. And I'm gonna put four just down here as well. And then I'm gonna snap to grid on four. Uh, again, there's a line that's a little bit overlap. Just gonna move it down just a pixel because I'm like that and I can save that there. So now we have another <laughs> bar that looks like it can use a bunch of actions and everything and it can, which is great. So in hotbar three here, I'm gonna wanna assign it a modifier because when I click a modifier that I assign in the software to one of these side buttons here, I can hold that button and then say, press one, two, three, four, and so on, and it'll do a different action. So that's what we're gonna put in hotbar three here. So for this one, I'm thinking we do a shift modifier. So hotbar three slot one, we do shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, shift five. We skip shift six here, which is the six key bind rate on the end there. We go to seven, 
Shift six, shift seven, shift eight, shift nine, and shift zero. And then on hotbar four, we want hotbar four to align with a modifier that's on hotbar two. And the reason for that is because when I go back into the software for our keypad here, I'll be changing this to be shift. And so in game, the keybinds here will be the modifier that we assigned on hotbar three, so it'd be shift. And then the control modifier we press here, which is on hotbar two. It's much easier to see when it's in action. You'll see it momentarily here. So hotbar four, Slot one, we do shift control one, shift control two, shift control three, shift control four, shift control five. And then of course we only have the three buttons at the bottom here. So I'm just gonna assign the three that we need. Shift control slot seven, shift control six. We skip slot six because uh, we, we skip slot six at the end here. We just go straight to seven. Shift control six, shift control seven, and shift control eight, shift control nine and that's just the three we need on that row and then we go over to our keypad software and i'm gonna make button 18 here my shift modifier because it feels naturally resting when i hold 18 i can still click all the buttons it just feels better you could assign it to button 12 here do like 12 and then click all the buttons or like 22 and click all the buttons. It's just that 18 is the most comfortable. So we go here. So I go here where it says left control and I'm gonna change that to left shift. Number 12 here because it's already left shift. I'm gonna clear that as well. And then I'm gonna clear the default key 22. And we'll, we'll assign different things to that in just a moment you'll see. But we're not quite done yet. So outside of the keypad itself, we still have two buttons on our mouse. We're gonna utilize these two buttons here and apply those somewhere for actions that we need at a more immediate level. The exact same way I did with keyboard and mouse. So again, I go back to HUD layout. I find a hotbar that I'm not using, which would be hotbar five. I go into UI element settings. I turn it on and I'm going to make that one something sort of short and stumpy. I'm just going to make it a basic four by three, I think, just because it's just kind of there for the two actions. It's all I really need. But I might even add more to my mouse because while there only is the two buttons on there, I got modifiers on my keypad that I can click to change the way that these buttons interact with whatever keybinds I set with those. Nice. So in my opinion, a four by three is perfect for that and trying to figure that out. And again, because I'm the way that I am, I want to line it up with hot bar three there and then save it. Go back into my hotbar and my keybinds. I'm going to find hotbar five here. Slot one, I'll set to mouse five. And then I'm going to want to assign slot five here, which is going to end up being this key here, to mouse button four, because it's going to be the literal physical translation on my mouse here that just helps understanding where my keybinds are and what to press where. And because my mouse buttons are on the right side, I keep them on that side. So I'm gonna start slotting in abilities and then making adjustments afterwards that are more quality of life adjustments to make this look better. But there's a reason why I'm slotting my abilities before I do the quality of life adjustments. Last video, I initially set up the bars as a Dark Knight, which is a tank. For today's video, I'm gonna set up my bars as a caster my summoner in particular, just so we have like a little bit of variance, I guess. Afterwards, I'm going to set up my tank and healer so you guys can see what that looks like as well on your keypad. But I'm going to start with setting up my summoner just so you can kind of understand and see our HUD and keybinds at work with a couple different roles. OK, so I've slotted all my abilities here for summoner and uh, I, I'm realizing I haven't played summoner since the beginning of 5.0 and like summoner rotation was like felt like I was like playing DDR and like just like mashing. But I guess they've changed things since i was a little confused at first i there's so many not buttons that i'm pressing hey all right maybe i can optimize summoner a little bit better now whoa it's almost like too easy now i'm looking at it like whoa okay well anyways that that's out of the way <laughs> I just think I can't believe it. I have so many buttons that are still available. I could just assign different things. Oh, it's great. We're not even done. And we're not even done yet. It's fantastic. I'm stoked. It's great. So as you guys can see, there's all these open spaces after we've assigned our abilities that we can just like move off. Like, I guess I could put my summons on six, seven and eight and like, I don't know, maybe bar four. Fester? That feels weird. Maybe in Kindle I'll put here. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot my res. And now we're going to do those quality of life changes that we mentioned before. So I'm going to go into my system menu, go into character configuration. I'm going to go into hotbar settings here. So one of the first things you'll notice here is we still have the hotbar numbers on our bars. We're going to want to remove those numbers, but you'll notice there's a difference in hotbar here. One, two, and three are all regular numbers. They don't have a box around them or anything. They're just regular numbers. That's actually a symbol that shows that hotbar four and five are shared hotbar. 
bars. We don't really want four and five as share hot bars because we still want this to be entirely class based. So what we're going to do is go into sharing here in our hot bar menu and unclick four and five. And in doing so, remove some of our abilities, which is my bad as well. Now I realize that it does remove some abilities here, which I'm just going to reassign really quick. So I had energy drain here and energy siphon here. But the reason we don't want those hot bars shared is because if we switch class right now, if I switch weapons, that would mean that you'd see energy siphon and energy drain still on there, but for a different class. Obviously we can't use those abilities on that class, so we don't want them shared. We'll get into HUD layout and sharing hot bars later, thankfully. I get to talk about it in a different video, but for now we don't want that on. And then we're gonna go back to display here and we're gonna click hide on assigned slots. And we still see the numbers here, so we're gonna unclick display hot bar numbers. And then we're going to unclick enable hot bar cycling button. Some of you might actually be cycling hot bars and that's totally up to you. It's a different way to play. But for our purposes and what we're doing here, we're not going to need hot bar cycling. Obviously, your experience is going to be different from what we're doing here and that's okay. So we're just going to unclick that for now. So now our hot bars actually look clean. We don't see the last slot that we didn't bind before. It lines up with our keypad here, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. And we have a whole bunch of other buttons here as well that are entirely accessible if we so choose to use those buttons. And our mouse buttons are set to instant casts, which I have as energy drain and energy siphon because I want to utilize those buttons as well. Again, you can set them differently if you'd like to, but for me, I like having those instacasts easily accessible at my thumb there. As, as you can see, I put a sprint button here because I am going to need a sprint. So I'm going to assign sprint on this hot bar to, I don't know, we could do, let's do like, say, I don't know, alt one or something. So I believe this would be hot bar five slot nine. So let's go ahead and slot that in there. So Alt one will be on sprint there. You can assign sprint to whatever button works for you. The reason I'm assigning it to alt one is because I'm gonna assign it somewhere on my keypad that's away from all the buttons. But if your keypad looks different than mine, you can assign sprint to, oh my God, any of these buttons really. This is something you can assign anywhere at this point. Like you wanna make sure that you have sprint barred though. I forgot to bar sprint last video and then I remembered right at the very end there. Sprint is very important. We need sprint. Put it anywhere that's comfortable for you to press. You want it to be accessible because it is something that you're gonna press often. Sprint is a tool that will absolutely want to have there. For me, I'm going to put it here on Alt 1 because I'm going to go back into my software here. And if you have a joystick and it clicks inwards like the Hori pad does, for example, I can actually assign a click in button for this and I'm going to make it Alt 1. So the click in is showing as F right now by default. I'm going to click that, change it to Alt 1. OK, so now when I go back into my game, I can actually click in my thumb on the joystick and I'm sprinting just like I would in like an action game or something like that. I click in a joystick and I'm zooming, I'm going. It feels extremely natural based off my experience with other games, just like third person shooters and first person shooters and whatnot. I just click in the joystick and I'm running. To me, that's what clicks best in my head, therefore I do it and I just assign that to the thumbstick by making this alt one and then in the software making the click in Alt one as well. So I'm going to test out some keybinds now that I haven't set it up. All right, so let's see if I remember how to play summoner at all with this, uh, this new rotation. All right, so first I'm going to want a big boy. Let's do it for it for now. Sure. Why not? Oh God. And we're pet hot bar. Uh, I don't want that there. I'm just going to move that pet hot bar, make it six by two really quick. And uh, let's say we move it like, I don't know. Let's move it like right here for now. That works for me. Let's make sure it lines up. Shift to snap to grid and we'll put it like just above the other hot bar there. Perfect. And actually I'm realizing, you know what we could do with all these extra buttons? We can actually assign different pet buttons uh, to our hot bar here if I really wanted to. You could be like a supreme summoner. I guess it really doesn't matter too, too much considering the way that summoner plays. This definitely would have been helpful in like, say like summoner from like 2.0 upwards to shadow bringers. But because, because summoners like simplified down a little bit more, it's okay to just have these here for now. You could totally just assign these though. I think that actually be really cool because we have, I mean, we have all, all the capability of doing so. We have so much space on this bar that we could totally do that. I'll just leave it as is, but just know that that is an option with summoner if you're playing summoner. All right, so I've got your Ruby Carbuncle out. I'm gonna just gonna toss a try disaster on him, start hitting him with stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. Oh, I can summon big boy. I forgot about that. Oh, well, that's kind of useless. I don't even get to use it. Oh, there we go. I'll just toss in the wind spray. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I'm waiting to do it again, but I can't do it again. Let's hit him with a ruin. Do the Akmore and hit him big time. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So as you can see, all my buttons are relatively accessible 
and they're working out very smoothly. I have access to all my utility and everything else. It all lines up quite nicely, actually, and it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm actually very happy with the way that this is set up. And then I can easily hold my shift modifier here and use like Bane or Lucid Dream or even Physic really quick to heal someone as like, you know, off summoner. You wouldn't really, but it's there. You know, I got Devotion on shift seven, which is real nice. I could toss an Addle over here as well really quick. Help with some damage, which is real nice. Do more assaults with my summon and whatnot. Go over here. This wind sprite's just sitting here unsuspectingly. Hit him with the rune too. And we're doing all right. And then I've got energy siphon and energy drain on my thumb. Oh, they share a, uh, a recast timer. Oh, maybe I can move. I can probably move something more effective there onto my thumb button now. But you see, everything works quite nice. Everything is smooth. I'm hitting on my buttons. I've got a relatively easy rotation playing summoner right now. Mind you, I'm hitting like low level ads right now for level 80. But you get the idea. Now let's see what that looks like with Warrior. So I fast forward a little bit. I have my key set for Warrior now. It took me a little while because I was like, I have so much real estate with the keypad and a modifier. It's actually nuts how much room I have to work with, with just a regular mouse and a keypad. And like, I learned something new today while I was setting this all up. And that's that I do have all this room for my regular layout, which is great. I had to fiddle with my personal UI for a little while. And then doing this makes me realize like, oh my God, I have so much room to work with, which is fantastic. So uh, let's give it a, let's give it a little go. Let's get, let's get some Felcleaves spam in there, shall we? Let's just go ahead. Let's just, let's just get some Felcleaves in there. Yeah. Ah, feels good. It's good. We gotta get low level mobs right now, but you know, you get the idea, so. Nice. It feels pretty good. And again, shift modifier, super accessible. The way I have it set up, the way I like to set up my tanks is that again, I have all my abilities that I know I'm going to use right here up top as my actionable abilities. And then I have my second bar, which is aggro generating. Um, I can just rotate here, which is really cool. I know that I don't need my AOE a ton. So therefore I have it on the second half of the bar because it's secondary to all my, my original rotation basically, right? So. That's kind of what I'm going for. It's pretty nuts, honestly. And then I have all my tertiary abilities once again on the bottom here, like shake it off, throw it out, everything else, rampart at the bottom, vengeance, and so on and so forth. And then my shift modifier will give me inner release, onslaught, and I always keep my stun the same way. So even on keyboard or mouse, my stun has always been modifier plus button that fits it where my finger is right now, what I'm tapping right now, because I just naturally gravitate towards it, even using the keypad because I'm familiar with how I use it on keyboard. It translates well, essentially. And then home gang, I have all by itself, all by its lonesome on bar four over here because it's an, it's, it's the qualified oh heck button. I don't really need to click home game that often. But when I do, I want it completely over here so that when I do click it, I really mean it. I'm flipping the switch and I'm hitting the button. Now let's try it with a healer. Okay, so this is what I got for my healer here. I only have Scholar leveled 280 right now. And you can already see that I do have some crossover with Summoner. So something I mentioned in my last video is if you are playing classes in the same role, you want to have skills that overlap for the sake of muscle memory. So say like I have my tank stance on Dark Knight here. I'd want my warrior's tank stance on the exact same button. If there's any cross class abilities such as lucid dreaming that I also had in my summoner, I'd want it to line up with my summoner as well as all my other casting classes because the muscle memory for all the role abilities and anything that's overlapping to some regard, stuff that's like same, same, but different is really handy to have in developing your overall skill at the game. Because again, with muscle memory, you're just going to happen to remember where you had certain things slotted within a specific role. So anyways, now I've got my scholar here. I've got all my attacking abilities on top, which is great. And then I've got all my my heal abilities right below that, which is fantastic. Oh. And I can just hit this guy, do the thing, do some slams, do some buffs, heal myself, attack, heal some mana, toss my fairy away, do some dissipation, all that fun stuff. And again, I can swift cast anything. I hold my modifier, shift one, then six. And I can do like a swift cast res or like or like throw chain stratagem on something. It's all available. Resummon my fairy even. It's all right there. Nice and easy. And then again, on my thumb buttons, I got that aether flow because you know I had it before on my summoner. And I like to just get that extra damage in as my scholar as well, if I can afford the aether for it at the time, right? Deployment tactics, you got your bubble as well. 
all very good stuff. Very easy to manage for a healer as well, which isn't too bad. Now, a couple quick tips and tricks that I haven't touched on uh, for a keypad as well that I would like to touch on here rather than in my HUD video. And that's just gonna be setting up a couple extra buttons so that you have more access to things via the keypad. So we only just set up our combat buttons and everything. Um, by default, the keypad has a tab for tab targeting and everything, which is great, which is where tab would be on a regular keyboard, and that's super handy. But we don't have anything to select our party members if we're healing them or anything, or if we need to cast stuff on them. So there's a little trick that I picked up that'll help you guys do the thing. So the first one is going to be a really quick way of selecting party members. And we're actually going to assign that to 12 here, right on the left side. We're going to assign a way to scroll through our party members via 12. And the way we do this is we go into our keybinds, go actually into game pad and keybinds and as you guys can see we have d-pad down here now traditionally on a controller d-pad up and down will scroll through your party members so if we sign it to a button we can scroll our party members which is awesome <laughs> you can also do this on keyboard too and the way i would recommend doing this is i'm going to assign shift tab on d-pad down and apply then we're going to go into our software here this guy here i'm going to assign to shift tab Okay, so then when I got a party member out, I'm just gonna summon my chocobo. Oh, he's in the stable. Ah! All right, I went and got him because it was worth showing you guys. So now when you're at a party and you click that button, it cycles through your party members just by clicking that button rather than tabbing through your enemies and everything else there it'll help you cycle through your party members and then highlight them and heal them and grant them buffs and whatever else you, you please especially on keypad you can again also do this on keyboard and mouse if you want to assign a button to d-pad down it's great for scrolling through stuff you just you just slam that button as quick as you can or if you're too far down the list you click away really quick and then you do it again you could even assign an up button if you wanted to and then back in our software here I would like to have a button Button for my map that's a big thing I click map often and I'm actually gonna assign it to our little guy over here gonna set that to M for map so now, in game, I can click this button and it brings up my map, which is great. It's just that little side button on the hoary pad here. I just click that. Because I bring up my map so much, I would like it as a standalone button that I hit at a relative amount, of course. And since I don't want to just like reach for my keyboard all the time, when I am using the keypad, I'm going to assign some stuff with the function modifier in the actual software itself. I'm not sure if other keypads have this, but if you have a function option and then it gives you a whole other list of able abilities when you hold the button down, definitely assign those because you can assign them for like inventory, toggle UI, screenshot, everything else that you would like access to. So I'm just gonna quickly do a couple just to show you guys for an example because it's easier to have those buttons accessible again rather than reaching for the keyboard to hit them. So I don't have 22 assigned here on my keypad so that when I click function plus here, it brings me to a whole other menu that is separate from our modified set in game that is only recognized by the keypad itself so then I can make this things like inventory armory chest duty finder character screen friends menu abilities menu and then I could set this back to left control which would be super helpful so I could do control home in my UI and so on and so forth I can set all of these to menu buttons or even further buttons as long as I bar them accordingly there's an unbelievable amount of of skill space in using a keypad that you could just it just opens up i'd also like to mention that the hoary pad works for playstation 4 as well so if you have access to a computer and you want to use keyboard or mouse and the hoary pad rather than a controller on ps4 all you have to do is set it all up on a computer using the software that comes with it to program it and then you can go and plug it into your ps4 which is awesome it's fantastic for an alternate way to control the game on console but you can set this up however you want to which is awesome so the reason i did left control home here for you guys is because i showed it in the last video i'm going to show it in here really quick as well it's a little late for it but you can go into your hud layout and when you're setting up your hud you can actually hold control home and click any element and it'll resize it rather than setting it all through the ui element settings you can just hold control home or assign a button for control home on your keypad and it'll resize things, which is awesome. Again, I did mention it in the last video, but it is handy to know in case you guys want to resize things in your HUD with ease. This is something I'm also going to mention in the HUD video as well, because it's an essential tool when we're setting things up. And then I want to set a button to Z because then I can do this and take out my weapon and stuff like that. And now you guys are more than equipped, <laughs> plenty equipped. So I know this video has gone on long enough. It was a little bit longer than the last one, that's for sure. Just because there's so much to cover with keypad, you can do so many 
many different things with it. You have access to like a huge amount of space. It's insane. And you can get really good and really comfortable with it, which is part of why I like it so much. You guys can find the same Final Fantasy 14 licensed Hordy pad that I use on the Square Enix store. They are still available and you can still purchase them. And personally, it has been my favorite keypad so far. I used to use the Logitech G13 way back in the day, but this, in my opinion, is just much more comfortable and, and is specifically made for MMORPGs. I'll put the link for it down in the description if you guys would like, just because it makes it easier if you guys do want to order something like that. Otherwise, there's many other options, such as the Logitech G13, the Razer Tartarus, I think the Orb Weaver as well, and any other sort of third party branded keypads as well. They'll all work very similar, if not the same. It's just a matter of what's comfortable for you. Again, I want to note that the Horror Pad here, Tactical Assault Commander, works on PS4, which is awesome. So if you want to change your controller preference, you can do that with this guy. Or just use keyboard or mouse on PS4. Thankfully, you can use the different peripherals across all consoles. So I hope that was a helpful video. It's taken me a while to record it because there's so much cool stuff that you can do with the keypad. I learned some new stuff today just by fiddling with things and being like, oh yeah, I could do that. Which makes me happy because that means I've grown as a player and I'm able to share that experience with you guys as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. If this was at all helpful or interesting, please drop a like for me. Be sure to subscribe as well for more content from me, mostly in Final Fantasy 14. And you can come find me streaming on twitch.tv slash gobrins or G-O-B-R-N-Z dot com. My link is on the site. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one. Take it easy, my dudes. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out. I, I left the voice mod out. Usually streams there to tell me that the voice mod's not on, but this time I just, I tried to make it funny and then it, it kind of all backfired. <laughs> I can't believe I left the voice mod on for like the first little bit there.